Hey everybody, welcome to the Antique Automotive Channel. My name's Adam. Today I'm working on a 66 Buick Sabre 400. And uh, it is a bit of an orphan. I dragged it out of a falling down garage in the city of St. Louis a few weeks ago. And it had been sitting there for, I don't know, uh, somewhere between five and 10 years. The, uh, the previous owner had passed in 2019. And before that, the car had developed a brake problem and he parked it. So uh, I have no idea what happened between brake problem and now, obviously, well, it sat. And uh, the ceiling fell in on, on, the, uh, on the garage, and so it literally was drenched. There was a cover on it, so there was a lot of areas where the paint has been compromised. And uh, that is where I'm gonna focus today. I have a, a laundry list of stuff to do on this car. Uh, I'll do a, a quick walkthrough on it and show you what I'm gonna do. But today I'm gonna concentrate on this paint and see what we can do with it. Okay, here we go. You can see how a lot of little surface rusty type uh, stuff coming through the paint. A lot of this stuff is gonna kind of disappear. I mean, you know, there's pits in the, in the paint, but uh, for the most part, this stuff will just kind of go away when we go ahead and uh, polish it up. There's a bunch of little granny dents on it, little spots here and there. But by far, this is the worst Part. And I think this is the area where most of this water had been concentrated uh, from where the roof had fallen in. The, you know, the, the vinyl top, it's got a little bit of bubbling, but I don't think there's any real serious rot back here. It feels nice and solid, but the vinyl has shrunk a little bit. Um, there's no holes here. It's just, you know, it's, it's, the rust has kind of eaten its way into the metal. So we're going to do our best here and just try to, you know, clean off as much as we can. I did a little bit of testing spot here with a few other little items to figure out what would best be used. As far as the interior is concerned, this window was open about a, an inch when it was inside the car or inside the garage that was falling down. So uh, we had a massive mold problem. So what I did was just completely removed everything out of the interior, uh, seats, carpet. Uh, I went ahead and steam cleaned the door panels and the rear panels. I did what I could with the headliner. It's still got some staining in there. It still stinks in here and it needs a headliner. There's nothing that I can do with that. I mean, it's, it's just so brittle. If I touch it, it starts ripping again. Um, seats came out okay. I mean, you can still see that there's some staining in here. Uh, a little bit of, you know, this is, these are original seats, 132,000 miles on the car. I went ahead and put new carpet in and I'm fixing everything that comes up. You know, every time I put the car on the road, something else comes up, so. Uh, but there's also things that keep fixing themselves, so that's kind of nice. Taking a look at the engine compartment is a Buick 340. The transmission is a 400, hence the LeSabre 400 edition. Uh, this is a four barrel carburetor carter and it needs to come off and be cleaned out, rebuilt, whatever, I've got the carb kit for it. Original AC car, which is kind of cool. It does not work. Surprise, surprise. I finally got the wipers to work. The motor was seized up. The blower motor was seized up. Anything electrical has been an issue on this car because of all of the uh, corrosion and sitting that, th th that this car did in, inside this garage. You can see a lot of this, you know, stuff just, it took its toll. A lot of this metal is going to clean up really well. The radio does not work. The blower motor finally works. We've got a glove box light. That light works. The dome light does not work. All the windows go up and down. The headlights work. Uh, turn signals, one of them works. I have to replace one signal housing on the front because it's completely rotten. And I went ahead and got new seals here. And I got a new trunk seal as well. Since this is the worst spot, I'm gonna start here and um, I'm just gonna go, I gotta go pretty aggressive on it to get this rust off of here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some four out steel wool and I'm gonna lubricate it with some just spray detailer. Any spray, de spray detailer would be fine. And you can work back and forth and you can kinda give it some circleage, but just scrub off that rust. Just do it enough to where that rust is, you know, the surface rust is going away and then move on to the next area. You 
you know, maybe just do a section at a time. Clean it off. This is gonna get me to a spot where I can take my number one cut with a phone or a, a wool pad on the DA polisher and make that look a lot better. Right now, there's a lot of micro scratches in here. The paint in general is already dead, so there's nothing I can do to hurt this thing. So, um, you know, you can pretty much use any really light cutting material that you can, maybe even 2,000 or 3,000 grit or uh, 3,000 grit on a, uh, on a DA sander. That may be fine. This, there's nothing we can do to get this out. We'll just have to go, you know, go as far as we can with it. Kind of the same spot over here. There's a real bad spot here, but the rest of the paint on the car looks like it's savable, you know, close enough to where we can make the car look decent without, you know, thinking that it's a rust bucket. So I got some work to do. I do want to mention that uh, the only time I'm going to be using the steel wool is on the rusty areas. So anything like this, uh, don't, don't do that if you don't have to. I'm removing material by doing this. So the less we remove, the better. Uh, so maybe you know, like over here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but kind of down the side of this quarter panel, it's got some rust, but just hit the rusty areas with, uh, with the high uh, abrasive stuff. Then you can come back and polish everything. All right, this is the worst part of the car, so I did it first. I still gotta re kind of wipe down and clean this area before we do any polishing on it, but it has improved tremendously. Even the stuff in here, I mean, there's just, if it's ruined, just do what you can. I mean, go at it, you can't ruin it anymore. Let's see, I got a few spots on the corners, kind of upper sections of the doors where the, you know, basically, mostly, the flat sections or the horizontal sections that are facing up are mostly the one areas that need it. So I'm gonna just go ahead and knock out this stuff here. Before I go hog wild on the paint, I want to go ahead and try to get this top cleaned up. Uh, I mean, I power washed it <laughs> and none of this stuff came up. I think a lot of this is just mold that has adhered itself. So I'm going to try some bleach white and, uh, and a scrubby brush and see what I can get out of it. It should come out pretty nice. I mean, it's just, it's just dirt on top of the vinyl. It's just a matter of scrubbing it off. You can see that stuff just turning brown. Let's see if we can find the rag here. Of course, I've never, never planned ahead. Go for it. Let's see what we got here. Mm -hmm. I think that cleans up pretty darn nice. There is a little bit of bubbling around the top all over the place, but I mean, it, it's, it's solid.
right, since the top is kind of like relatively clean, I'm gonna go back over the car and just kind of wipe everything down, make sure I get a lot of this, uh, all this chalky stuff off that uh, we left on here when we did the uh, rust remediation. I normally am clay bar these things before I do any paint correction or polishing, but I have pretty much gone over everything on this car already, so I'm not really going to worry about it. Plus, this paint's not super great to begin with, and uh, it's just going to continue to pick up contaminants from these rust spots. So I'm basically going to be just working myself in a circle here if I try to clay bar it. All I want to do is just knock the high spots off, basically. Okay, here we go. Number one, cut with a wool pad on a, on a uh, DA or random orbital polisher, whatever you want to call it. If you use a, a rotary buffer, it tends to be a little on the aggressive side, so I try to, you know, if you're trying to just kind of bring paint out, better use something like this. What does it look like? Hmm. Could be worse, I suppose. Here's a spot I did. You can see kind of a little bit of scratchies right there in the light. You can't really see it on this video, but I can see it in, per in person. But compared to what it is, where I haven't touched is quite a difference. So this should wake the car up rather well. Even a, just, just a good compound on this car would do wonders. Old lacquer paint doesn't really do much when it's this dead. With old single stage paint like this, it uh, it really clogs up the uh, pad. So every half panel or so, you need to take this off, scrub it clean, and uh, run it dry. Normally, if I'm uh, if I'm doing a full polish or paint correction, I try to remove little emblems like this just so I can get around or inside this stuff. But I mean, where do you stop? So I'm just gonna do my best with what I have here, and uh, that's gonna be the way it is. Rust. 
Nice. If you can see this but it sure is making it a lot better the car actually has a little shine to it again with the trim that should be coming off so i can get around the in that insides of it but this is really shining up I mean, you look how clearly you can see the car in the reflection. Pretty cool compared to what it is up here. Anyway, I'm gonna keep going around this and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, paint is as cleaned up as it's gonna get. I've got the top dressed with uh, stuff, goop. Um, I do plan on selling this car, so I want to make sure all the safety equipment is working. I got the horns working the other day, uh, headlights, brights and dims work, brights and dims. Um, turn signals are a, a, a ish, issue. I've got a new flasher for it. Um, I've got bulbs, and I also have a new turn signal housing for the right front side because it's completely rotted out, and that's why pretty much the right side isn't working at all. Uh, Motor mount, I broke it the other day on the driver's side and almost sent the fan through the shroud. That was fun. And a carburetor rebuild kit. And don't forget your chassis manual for the year and make that you're working on. It is the Bible. So let's see, what are we gonna do first? Not this, this sucks. Let's do a turn signal housing. Okay, here's what I'm talking about. There's the uh, housing there, and it's completely rotten. And uh, the original socket had been replaced with this, which needs a ground to work. And unfortunately, this is rotted out as well. So uh, what I did was I contacted a friend. He has a complete housing available for this thing, so we're going to stick it in. The connection for the housing is down here inside the engine compartment. So you gotta take the battery out on the right side to get to it. Come on now. I'd help if I had a light. Is it going? I don't know. Probably not. Okay, so this was just literally, you know, kind of slapped together. And let's see if I can get this out of here. There we go. So there's the connection there. Just a little two prong flung. And that's supposed to bush into the core support. So that goes nine nine. So here's the old turn signal housing. You can see that it's pretty much gonzo. Um, this was already broke off. Looks like somebody had tried to replace it already. This this side came off fine though. Um, a piece of the car came with it. So that's fun. I think it was just a piece of core support. This spot where these batteries lie usually are pretty rotten anyway. It's, there's nothing. Uh, majorly structural in here it's just the that outer kind of section of the core support right there so uh we're gonna ignore that because there's really nothing i can do about it but i do want to clean this up a little bit front and back uh to make sure we have a good ground 
to the new turn signal housing. The new one is uh, here. And it looks like uh, my buddy did a little cleanup, a little light blasting on it, so it should should ground pretty well. It's got a really nice clean socket in there. So I'm super happy about that. Thanks, Briz. I do want to clarify something. I was mentioning a ground. Um, these bulbs ground to the body. Even though there's two wires here, we got, I don't even know what color these are. There's one striped and one color. Um, these are both power wires and they, one is used for the turn signal and the other one is used for the driving or the parking lot or wherever you want to call it. And so this is not ground in power, it's two powers. There's one thing I've learned through all these years, or I should have learned, is that when I have all this stuff apart, I should clean the terminals before I slap it back together. But apparently I have yet to learn that. I had this all put back together and it didn't work. So, Since I don't have the proper tool, I never do. Oh, come on. There we go. Anyway, these are these aren't super dirty. This is the side of the turn signal housing, but the uh, the wire harness housing was pretty disgusting, and I lost my sandpaper already. Oh, nope, there it is. So just do, uh, you know, if you end up having to do this, clean everything up the best you can before you put it together. And, you know, usually you should have some dielectric grease hanging around somewhere, but I don't. Get that barb kicked back out a little bit before you stick her back in. Just do one at a time. Because if you do them both, you'll mix them up. I don't think it really matters on this one, but um, since they both serve the same purpose. Come on. This used to be a screwdriver. It's not anymore. No, it's just a hand dagger. Yeah. <sighs> All right, let's put it back in. This thing has done a really good job of kicking my butt tonight. I thought this was gonna be an easy fix. It was not. So I put the new housing in and it, uh, it got feedback. It was a really dim turn signal and the driving light or parking light didn't work at all, but it would light up the turn signal indicator on the dashboard. So I was having some mix of voltages and stuff somewhere. Uh, and after, oh, I don't know, two or three hours, I don't know, it felt like three hours, probably, probably more like an hour and a half. Um, I found out that it was actually the housing. <laughs> it, uh, the, the socket was not grounding with the housing very well at all. So it was getting just a little bit and kind of messing with voltage and turn signal and driving light systems are very weird and they will uh, they'll back feed and do funny things if uh, if things aren't exactly where they need to be so I now have full turn signals full parking lights at least in the front the backs are kind of funky they work but the sockets are dirty and 
crappy, just like everything else on this car. So um, I think I'm going to call it a night. It's like 9 o'clock, and I'm sure my wife is wondering where I am. So I think that's going to be it for now. I don't even know what else I have to do on this car. Motor mount. Um... What else is on this table? What do I need to do? Oh, carburetor kit. We'll see what goes on tomorrow. I'm going to get some dinner. I lied. I'm staying out here and working. I went inside for a few minutes and uh, she's making me a pizza. And we're gonna bring it up. So I'm gonna keep working since this is all on my dime. This is the time that I have to work on my stuff. So I'm ripping the truck seal out. It needs to be replaced. Let's see if I can at least get this done tonight. That uh, turn signal thing really kicked my butt but I'm bound and determined to get this thing back on the road. So. Trunk weather stripping can be some of the easiest stuff to do it's damn near impossible to get the factory stuff out without screwing something up, <clears throat> especially if you're trying to save the paint. I mean, it's easy if you're doing a full restoration or a complete paint job. You can just rip the stuff out and zip all this stuff out with a wire wheel. But I can't do that with this car, so I'm going to have to be careful and just kind of slowly chip away at it and uh, get all this old crap out of the channel, blow it out, vacuum it out, do what i got to do, and then stick the new stuff in. And... Uh, yeah, it's just going to be a minute. Okay, proper way to put the stuff in. If you look at the profile, the top dips out. That is what faces out, that direction. It doesn't go in, it goes out. I see 50% of these things put in the wrong direction. And all it is is just paying attention to how it is put in originally. So as far as the uh, the seam goes, it's going to be somewhere down in this area generally. This, the the weather stripping on this car that was that I just ripped out was in the center, but all, most of the time, what I see is a there's a there's a paint dab or something like that that marks center here and. The seam is offset to one side or another. Usually it's off to the right, but uh, I don't think it really matters at this point. So just uh, pick a spot and go. As long as it's down low, you don't want your seam to be up top. So what I like to do is, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be that guy and keep the seam off to the side. Find a plastic dauber or some sort of a pushing device, get, here, I'll get you in closer. Normally I would have this all cleaned up and perfect, but this is not a perfect car. So, um, you know, you're going to tuck in the bottom section first. So this, 
this L section along with this guy right here is all going to be tucked into the get uh, to, to the groove. So what happens is just kind of lay it down to where this lower lip sits on top. That's where you want to kind of start and get this thing laying and then take your tool and tuck in the back side. At least this is how I do it anyway. Just work your way all the way around it and I'll see you at the end. So we're getting close to the end here and I'm going to have to make a cut. I usually try to overcut, you know, overlap by just maybe a, a eighth to a quarter of an inch and then make a, a cut that is slightly angled this way so that when you put them together, they don't want to split apart which kind of forces the the ends together at least where you can see it if you're looking down at it you don't see you don't see it wanting to pull apart on itself and if you wanted to you could glue these two ends together just to really make it a thing but that's it you know that really was about really only about 20 minutes of work if you had to get everything nice and cleaned out and perfect and whatnot, it would, you know, be considerably more. But uh, at the end of the day, you've got a brand new trunk uh, seal. All right, once we're ready to close the trunk, these things are super, uh, they're really tight most of the time. And you, you may have to use quite a bit of force to get the trunk to shut because there's... The, Modern trunk weather strips and every other weather strip on the market is really, it's not like the old stuff and it really sucks. But if you can get this thing shut with a reasonable amount of force, then it will eventually settle and it won't be a problem. But you know, this is, it's taking some force to get it shut. But we now have a positive seal and the other one, literally, I could, I could lift the trunk up and down and it would bounce because there was just no seal left. So I think we're good in that department. I'm going to have to pop this thing back open and clean everything out again and fix these turn signals on the back side because they get all uh, rusty and grubby. All right, I've had enough fun for the day. It is uh, almost 10 o'clock in the evening and uh, I'm starving. So anyway, I, we've got plenty of stuff done on the car. We're making re really good progress. Uh, we've got the paint done as good as we're gonna get it. Uh, what else do we do? Turn signals, that was a lot harder than I thought it'd be. <laughs> Trunk seal was good. We've still got the roof rail seals, engine mount, and carburetor rebuild to do, and whatever else comes when I finally get this thing running down the road. I actually test drove it the other day and I broke the engine mount and uh, the column uh, shift linkage fell off. So <laughs> that was an eventful drive down the street. So, yep. All right. That's going to be it for me. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. I will see you on the next video.